Hey everybody, if you are a parent at all, of any child, you know the moments where you just kind of get that pit in your stomach, that rock that kind of sits there. Um, when your child gets hurt or they're facing struggles or challenges at school or maybe being bullied or something. And um, if you're a parent, you've, you've dealt with those. If you're a parent of a child with special needs, that is, a, a, I think, a, a much more regular occurrence. Um, and it's still odd to me, even after uh, Trent just turned 27, so he was diagnosed at two, so 25 years of, 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 of challenges and struggles and feeling that pit in your stomach. We, we still have those. And um, it's, it's still a struggle and a challenge. You know, we started Drawings by Trent because we knew at some day Trent's mom and I were gonna be gone. Uh, Trent's care was gonna transfer to another member of the family. And w we wanted to make sure that, um, that as much as possible, we helped prepare for Trent's future. Uh, not just for him to make sure that he had the things that he needed, but so that he wasn't a financial burden on the rest of the family. Trent will always have to have somebody with him. He will always need that support. Um, and having to be his primary caregivers now for 27 years, um, we know that's not always easy. Um, Andy and I expected to be empty nesters by this point in our lives and, uh, you know, be able to just jump on the motorcycle and go to dinner or do whatever. And we can't do that. We've, we've basically had a child we had to make arrangements for and take care of uh, for 27 years. Um, not, not what we expected. And so we know the challenges that are going to face uh, uh, probably Easton and, and Tristan, um, Tristan, Trent's sister, as they take over his primary care at, at some point, hopefully long into the future. And so we wanted to make sure that um, from a financial standpoint, um, the challenges associated with taking care of him didn't necessarily involve finances, or at least we helped prevent that as much as possible. Um, we know that if Trent were neurotypical and he had this skill, this is probably what he would do with his life. He doesn't have a voice to promote that himself. And so we're just doing our best to be his voice, um, to help him do what we think he would probably do if he had the ability to, to do that himself. And thankfully, it allows, uh, it allows us to help him provide for his own future and to give him, um, in, that, in that way, to give him purpose and passion in, in life. But there are still times, more frequently than we like, actually, where, where we just get that you know, that rock in our, in our stomach as we think about things. A little bit later this morning, I'm going to go in and uh, have a heart cath done. Uh, heart doc thinks I, I might have some blockage, and so they want to go check things out. Uh, it's pretty routine. I, I know tons of people who've, who've done this. Um, I didn't expect to be doing it at 53, um, but I, I guess that's the way it, that's the way it goes. But I had I drove into work yesterday and I was sitting in the truck before I went in the office and, and it, it just kind of struck me that, um, this is something that my dad's had done several times and, and now I'm going in for it. But probably my kids are going to face that at some point. But it struck me that Trent might have to deal with this at some point in his life and in his future. And when you deal with a nonverbal um, adult who can't process uh, emotions, who, who can't process what's going on around them, who, who can't think about the, the future and go, okay, I know I need to, to put up with this difficulty for a moment because uh, at the end of this, it's going to be better for me. Um, if you can't reason that out, 
uh, that becomes a much bigger challenge. And so there are all kinds of things that, that go into a, an individual who is an adult with special needs, especially um, with, with neuro issues that, that make it difficult or impossible for them to process what's going on around them or what's happening to them. You know, in Trent's case, he can't communicate uh, pain in, in a, a verbal way, and he can't tell us where that pain is coming from. Um, so the thought of him having chest pains at some point and being able to communicate that effectively to somebody um, really kind of terrifies me um, because there are all kinds of things that could happen that he couldn't communicate and nobody around him would have any idea that he was struggling with that. If Trent was in pain, if he were having chest pains, he would probably get agitated. Um, he may lash out physically towards himself first, um, but then maybe towards others. Um, trying to communicate that he's in pain, but not being able to say, my chest hurts, I think I'm having a heart attack. He can't, he won't be able to communicate those things. And and so I, I hope that by the time Trent gets to be in, in his 50s, he's halfway there, more than halfway there, um, that the technology and things like um, Apple Watches and stuff uh, it has, has improved to a point where th they'll be able to detect some of those things and give warnings. Um, that that would be really that would be really nice, um, and and I, and I hope that some of those technologies are available in Trent's future. Um, but I just was struck by uh, this reality kind of setting in that that Trent's not getting younger; he's getting older. He's going to face physical challenges um, that many older people face. And that just brings on a whole new set of things for us to be aware of and concerned with and, and, um, and, and honestly, sometimes worry about. Uh, I, I'm able to, to understand what's going to happen today. I'm prepared for it. Uh, I don't know what they're going to find, but I'm, I'm okay with, with that and, and let's move forward. And I, I know where I'm going. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm feeling pretty good. But it does concern me that um, maybe after Andy and I are gone and Trent is with uh, Tristan and Easton and they have a family of their own uh, and are taking care of him and running the business and things as well, that they're going to have to deal with this. And, um, and that, that's concerning. And so we want to make sure that, that we have things in place as best as possible so that Trent can not only... Uh, receive the care that he needs, but if he needs a, a wearable device or something that will help alert other people to the things going on in his body that he's unable to e express or talk about, um, uh, tell somebody about, that, that that device might be able to alert um, somebody else. You know, we're so thankful. Many of you know that in May 9th, Trent's mom, Andrea, was involved in a car accident and and her Apple phone, uh, her iPhone, uh, alerted all of us in the family that there had been a wreck and that emergency services had been called to her location. Um, that happened before any uh, first responders or anybody got there. Um, there, there was an off-duty police officer who arrived first on the scene after the accident. She did a, a marvelous job and um, was, was so kind to Andrea and, and to me. She called me, um, but the first call that was made uh, to emergency services was from her Apple uh, or her iPhone. And so we're hopeful uh, that something will come up in the future that will help us understand that better and, and, and be able to... Um, to have a little more confidence that even if Trent can't tell us what's wrong, that maybe there's a device that can help alert us if there's some challenges and things going on with him. Um, and, and so we're, we're hopeful for that. We're hopeful that uh, that technology will improve so that Trent's siblings, when he is older and they have to make decisions about him and his care, um, that that will be a, a easier thing for them to do uh, but but I really just wanted to say, uh, you know, if you're a parent 
of a child with special needs, you know that feeling. You know the concern and the worry that comes uh, for your uh, adult children who are going to face things in their lives that, um, that they don't understand, that they can't process, that they can't reason through. Uh, and, um, and that's a hard thing. And, and so, you know, let it be hard. Uh, we have faith, you know, we talk about that a lot and, and we, we lean on that a lot. And so uh, we have faith that there's somebody watching over Trent, even when we can't. Um, and, uh, uh, and so, I, you know, what do you do? What do you do? You, you do the best that you can with what you have at the moment, the information that you have. Um, and if you miss something, you go back and you go, okay, what could I have done better? What, what kind of things should we be looking for that maybe we weren't looking for before? Uh, you prepare, you plan, and, and then you trust that, uh, at least in our case, you know, we, we trust that God's going to uh, see us through those difficult times. Um, God, we know they're going to come, but we also know that we're going to get through them. So anyway, if you're struggling with that, uh, you know, if you're facing those challenges, we know how you feel. We know what it's like. Um, and uh, it, it is a challenge. But look, this is what happens when you're a parent. You don't get to choose those things. And um, and and so we say in the family, what else are you going to do? You just do what needs to be done. Um, so look, uh, you can handle this. You can get through it. It's it's going to be difficult. It's going to be tough. As your child gets older, the things don't get easier. They just change a little bit. And the things that you were worried about when they were a child, maybe you're not worried about those things. You're worried about a whole new set of things. And so the job of a parent, it, it never ends. Um, and uh, whether you're empty nesters or not, you still worry and think about your kids and you want the best uh, for them. Um, and in our case, our, our grandkids, uh, little Winry had a, a tongue tie and, and a, a lip tie uh, fixed yesterday. And, um, and it, man, I was just a big, it was a big day, emotional day uh, yesterday for us. But um, anyway, I, uh, look, we're, we're praying for you. We're pulling for you. And um, uh, we know that it's difficult, but, but you can do it. Um, just do the best you can because that's really all, all we can do. Thanks for following.